we're going to put together a good all-rounder PC for mid-2022. GPU prices have been on the decline as well as some other components, so I thought why not celebrate with the PC build for 2022. For the last year or so, I have refrained from doing any sort of set price for a PC build from the volatility of prices and lack of inventory. This build in particular isn't so much so focused on a strict budget, but provides a nice outline for an upper mid-tier PC that can be used for work, school, gaming, rendering, and more. With that being said, let's go over the individual components I have laid out here today. First up is the heart of the build, the Intel 12600K. This currently retails somewhere around $280 and provides great performance for Intel's upper mid-range offering. It has six hyper-threaded performance cores and four smaller efficiency cores, making a total of 16 threads. If you want to learn more about this architecture and its features, I have a video going over my recent personal build outlining just that. Anyways, this CPU provides a lot of overhead for multi-threaded applications and games willing to utilize it. To pair the 12600K, MSI sent over their MAG B660M more motherboard. This retails around $180 and is micro ATX. Yes, there is no overclocking with this board and the $180 price point can step into some entry level Z690 motherboards. But this one in particular can properly power at 12600K and you keep the benefit of having those efficiency cores. Also, this is a DDR4 motherboard since using DDR5 is hard to find. The GPU we're using is the PowerColor Hellhound 6700 XT. This is a solid GPU giving the RTX 3070 a good competitor at MSRP. It will be hard to find the Hellhound at MSRP, however there are other 6700 XTs available. This card provides solid 1440p performance and the Hellhound in particular is whisper quiet. I have a thermal and noise review if you want to learn more. To cool the 12600K is the MSI MAG Core Liquid 240R V2. This was also sent over by MSI to check out. The first revision of these coolers had pump issues failing so V2 is supposed to address that. How will it hold up? I have no idea but I can provide thermal data at least for this. For RAM, I'm using the 16 gigs of Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro at 3200 MHz. It's about $85 right now. 16 gigabytes is the baseline to have for most gaming PC builds these days. Powering this machine is the Be Quiet Pure Power 11 1000 watt PSU. This is around $155. 1000 watts is overkill for this build. In fact, I would recommend the 750 watt variant instead to be more suitable in terms of what you need versus excessive overhead. Also from Be Quiet, is the Light Wings 140mm triple fan set. This is about $84 and certainly excess for this build. However, this is supposed to rival other premium RGB fans. These are ARGB with 5 volt connectors so the LEDs are addressable. For the case I'm using in this build, I would opt for the 120mm variants instead, since the rear fan only supports that size. Unfortunately, the fans can't be daisy chained for the 4 pin power connection, so you may want to opt for a fan splitter or a small fan hub to connect these fans if you aren't using an all in one liquid cooler. For storage, I'm using a 1TB Western Digital Black SN770 NVMe drive. This is arbitrary, of course, and you can choose your storage accordingly. The SN770 is around $105 to $120 and features Gen 4 PCIe support. I've been using the previous generation in my personal build for a while and have been enjoying the read and write speeds with transferring files on and off the drive with video edits. Obviously, if you've got a large gaming library, I'd recommend some large capacity HDDs as a secondary drive to this. Lastly, to house it all together is Fantex P360A. This is a mid-tower case. You can certainly opt for a smaller case if you like since we're working with the micro ATX board. However, this case has excellent airflow, proper storage configuration, great cable routing, and a not too big footprint, at least for a mid-tower case. This retails for $100, but at the time of this video sits at around $90 for both white and black versions. If you want a walkthrough guide of what it's like building in this case, you can find the video in the card above. For this build, I will be installing Windows 11 to better utilize Intel's thread director, working with the efficiency cores from the 12600K. Now that we've got everything together, I'm going to use editing magic to put this PC build together faster than I ever have before.
All right, let's get to these benchmarks. This isn't going to be an extensive list, but something quick and explanatory of the 1440p performance of this PC. As baseline, the TimeSpy score was a combined 12,516 with individual scores for the graphics at 12,456 and CPU at 12,871. For gaming, we're starting with Cyberpunk 2077 with a high preset and motion blur turned off. For this test, I'm driving around in one of the densest parts of Night City. This held an average FPS of 60 and a 1% low of 49. This is quite impressive as the high preset has a lot of options that can be cranked down without losing visual fidelity. Not to mention this is an almost worst case scenario as the more open sections of this game can see quite a boost in FPS. So this performance has a lot of overhead left with the correct optimization. My 9900K and 1080 Ti were struggling to get at least 45 FPS in these areas of the map when I initially played this game. It's impressive to see how far the upper middle range parts have come in the last few years. Next is Doom Eternal with the ultra preset and motion blur turned off. While playing some horde and a barrage of enemies coming towards you is a great way to test the graphical limits of the game. This saw an average FPS of 178 and a 1% low of 110. This game is incredibly well optimized and you don't even need to adjust the settings to get better performance. No Man's Sky is next while flying around in the lower atmosphere to load in ground level objects as well as load chunks of the world. This averaged at 120. 24 FPS and a 1% low of 110. This is a really tight performance spread between the average and the 1% low. However, this game does stutter from time to time while loading different environments or chunks regardless of the PC, but worth mentioning if you find yourself in a similar position. The last game to test is Valheim. Although this game's graphical appearance may seem simple in nature, it does unexpectedly require some juice to keep it fluid. All the settings for this are set at high, and for this test, my character is strolling through the meadows, which have a lot of items to render into view. This average was 78 FPS with a 1% low of 65. This is another tight and consistent performance without messing with the graphical options. Lastly, let's see what the noise and thermal performance is like. All the fan and pump settings are left at their stock fan curve. During idle, temps for the CPU were 6.5 degrees Celsius over ambient, while the GPU was 22.5 degrees Celsius over ambient, with the GPU fans not spinning at idle. The noise level is 42 decibels at 17 inches away from the PC, and this is what it sounds like from the camera shotgun microphone. While playing Cyberpunk, the temps remained around 26 degrees Celsius over ambient for the CPU and 34 degrees Celsius over ambient for the GPU while maintaining the 42 decibel sound level of total system noise. This PC is very efficient at keeping the noise down while keeping the temps in check as well. While the sound level doesn't really change from idle to load with the room temperature staying underneath 28 degrees Celsius, you only notice the difference of the fan spinning faster, but not necessarily producing more noise. All the components in this build work cohesively together to keep noise down as well as attempts and deliver smooth 1440p gaming performance all around. It also provides good overhead in case you want to better optimize your game settings for an even better 1440p performance. The motherboard is properly powering the 12600K and the RAM's XMP profile, while the power supply has enough overhead for all these components and then some while being completely quiet under load. I really like how this PC came together and if you did too then the links to the parts will be listed in the description in case you are interested. Feel free to mix and match the parts that work best to your needs. You don't need to replicate this PC to each exact part, but you can if you want to. I know it takes a while for me to get these videos out, but they take a while to make to do them right. Let me know if you enjoyed this format of video and want to see more builds in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.